This upcoming duo brings creative, traditional cuisine to their catered events. Now, whether you attend one of their pop-up dinners or you hire them to cater your next soiree, one thing is for sure, set your expectations high because satisfaction is guaranteed. I'm Stacey Static and you're tuned in to The Daily Mix, Who's Cooking? And up next, I'm cooking with Culture Catering. I'm joined by Misha Kay, co-owner of Culture Catering, and Chef Jack, executive chef of Culture Catering. And you all have it smelling too good in here already. It must be garlic simmering in butter. Garlic, yes. All right, so what are we cooking today? Um, today we're cooking a seafood Cajun um, pasta. Mm. So right now we have some garlic simmering with some red pepper flakes just to pull out the flavors of both. Okay. So that's what's going on right now. Then we're gonna add some mussels and shrimp and we're actually doing a reduction sauce with heavy cream. Okay, mm -hmm. nice. And what kind of noodle are we using for this pasta? Linguini pasta. A linguini mm -hmm. pasta. I'm super excited because I'm super <laughs> hungry. I'm glad that I come ready to eat. So Misha, tell me, what made you start a career in food service? Well, I just come from a family of cooks. Okay. Um, I'm not culinary trained, <laughs> but I can throw down a little bit. Right, right, right. Um, people were just telling me for the years that I should go ahead and get into the industry, and finally I stepped out on faith and decided to do it. Well, you all are doing it now. So how is how was uh, this culture catering company formed? Um, well, Chef Jack used to work with me at a former restaurant that I own, okay. and uh, we decided to step out and, and just do something different. And she and I both agree that cultural food is mm. where you know comfort and where people are excited and mm. we want to give people something that they're familiar with mm -hmm. um, and you know a lot of times she gets creative and kind of changes it a little bit but Absolutely. most of the time you can definitely relate to that uh, that entree so we're adding the mussels now we're adding the mussels to the pan whether we have the um the garlic the butter and the red pepper flakes you want to kind of get that going and have them open up a little bit okay mm-hmm and then um, next we'll add the shrimp once those cook just a little bit. And with seafood, they cook, it cooks rather quickly yeah, too. So yeah, you gotta sure. mm -hmm. keep an eye on it and, and we're gonna get the, the sauce simmering a bit a little later on. So tell me about Culture Catering's specialties, Jack. Can you tell me um, about that? Basically, we, we specialize in cultural cuisine. Mm -hmm. um, specialties, um, it's, it's, it's cultural comfort food, I can say. Um, that's, that's what we love personally, just comfort food from all walks of the earth. So that's what we want to specialize in pretty much. Yep. So what kind of training did you did you get in order to prepare yourself for things like this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I went to culinary school, um, Lake Cole Culinary some years back, okay. um, maybe, whoa, let me see, about six years. So I've been in the industry about seven years now. Culinary school was six years ago. Um, you know, I was um, executive chef twice over now, and now we have our catering company, which has been going pretty well for us. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you all actually do pop-up dinners, and I yes. actually yes, was, yes, I, was yes, I attended yes. one of them, and I got to tell you, I looked at the menu before that particular dinner, and I said, I think I know who the chef is. Because yes. had, it was, I, I want to say. I kind of have that familiar yeah, mark. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it was a few things. I know duck bacon is probably one of the things that you do. Is and that? her duck rangoon. Oh, oh duck sure. Okay, rangoon. I've never had that, but I was just like, I think I know who this chef is. Mm -hmm. So do you have any other things that you probably incorporate into a lot of your recipes that keeps it kind of consistent? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, some of her family recipes, mm -hmm. um, like today we're using a uh, secret ingredient, so this will be our Cajun spice today. So just those things just kind of <laughs> give us that familiar flavor, you right. know, so yeah. So definitely things like that, like the duck bacon. We try to use familiar items, but in a different way, mm -hmm. you know, just so... Like you said, sometimes when you go, you're like, oh, I think I know who's I behind this. I, <laughs> I think I know who this may yeah. be. You can definitely tell yeah. when, you see it, when you see her work. 
Well, absolutely, and it smells delicious. So you added the shrimp, and yes. those are some pretty large, almost yeah, those, prawns. Yeah, those are pretty <laughs> large shrimp. You know, I feel like if you want to, you tell them people they're going to have seafood, give them seafood. You yes, know what I you mean? want because to see the food. food exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm let the, I'm going to let the shrimp just cook just for a little moment. Then we're going to um, add a little white wine, and then our heavy cream, some Parmesan cheese, and the other spices here: nutmeg, salt, pepper, our Cajun spice. No, after once those shrimp cook halfway through, you don't want them to cook till they're completely done because okay. they still have to simmer in the sauce. And then, you know, you don't want them to be overcooked. Oh, yeah, because yeah. you get mm -hmm. that. A lot of yeah. people, I see that in reviews at restaurants all the time. The right. shrimp were perfectly cooked because the last yeah. thing you want is a chewy, exactly. overcooked exactly. shrimp. And exactly. you can easily do that with seafood. So exactly. people, make sure. sure you watch it. So you can uh, definitely get the recipe throughout the uh, episode here and you're adding the white yes, wine adding some white so does wine it now. matter what kind of wine you use i like to cooking? use a dry wine you really don't want to go the sweet, sweet route unless okay. you're cooking like a dessert or something like that so mm -hmm. i'm just using a, um, a pinot grigio so yeah and this it probably is, should be something you want to drink since you're only using exactly. a exactly oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> that's you know there's some people say you know just get a cheap wine and yeah. cook with no yeah. if you won't drink it don't cook with it exactly and then you want to drink so. while you're cooking mm -hmm. exactly okay <laughs> let's pour it up <laughs> <laughs> all right so you do these pop-up dinners when yes. is your next event you did a big one for valentine's day i saw oh, the yes, pictures yes. on instagram yes it was making me hungry. I was super jealous of everybody who attended. I was like, oh, I need a date. So tell me about that particular dinner and what you served. Oh, that, well, that was a great dinner. Yeah, it was a great um, dinner. And yeah. everybody that comes to our mm -hmm. events, it's not couples. You okay. know, there were some people that came for the, the Valentine event. Um, so we, it's a four course. Typically when we do our pop-ups, we do a four course okay. meal. This time we did an antipasti station. Oh, nice. Which is really convenient because when they walked into the venue, there was already some snacks for them to get going. So we, we had that. different roasted vegetables and cheeses and jams mm -hmm. and breads and everything. Mm -hmm. um, then we went into our appetizers. We, of course, we had her famous duck rangoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which <laughs> so I need to try. You really do. If you yeah. think crab rangoon is good, not until Wait, you've you had the duck, this duck right. rangoon. I love a good duck anything. Anyway, yes. go ahead. <laughs> and then we had uh, Chef Jack is really known for wings. Okay. So we had some wings. Yeah, we did the, um, I did the mango wings that day. Oh, yeah, the, the mango, mango berno mm -hmm. wings. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then uh, samosas, mm -hmm. which is... It's like a Mediterranean mm -hmm. type, Mediterranean. type dish. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and that's so, what we talk about, creative culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we do other cultures, you know, not just soul food or Creole food yeah. or, or something like that. So mm -hmm. how do you do the research to come up with these different... <laughs> Uh, we we eat a lot, breathe, live <laughs> food. You know what I yeah. mean? Right, um, right, right. Yeah. So we just we're constantly working, in, even when we're not work, actually mm -hmm. physically working. We're just looking at recipes, trying new restaurants around St. Louis, different things like that, just to keep us in the know of what's hot and you know just different things that we would like to learn personally. So yeah, that sounds like a pretty fun job. You know? Oh, okay. oh yeah. yeah, social media a lot. <laughs> yeah. Inspiration. You know, just anywhere you can get inspired. So. Well, you definitely can. So you're actually, I guess, gonna reduce that down yes, a little bit reduce just for a little bit it smells mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. fantastic in here mussels and shrimp and cream sauce anytime you add heavy cream you know it's wrong and you know it's right oh, all yeah. at the same all time, the same time. <laughs> it's yeah. all it's all good so we're gonna go ahead and uh let this finish simmering and when we come back i'm gonna tell you about an event you don't want to miss and we're gonna eat so hold on <laughs> Welcome, innovators, dreamers, pioneers of the 21st century. We've been expecting you to come discover your dreams and make your ideas take flight. Just like so many explorers that came before you. Welcome to the hub of opportunity. Welcome to St. Louis. Always exploring. You know what, welcome back. While culture catering has it in here smelling so good, I gotta tell you about this amazing event. 
St. Louis is full of talented artists, and there's a space created for these individuals to express themselves. A couple of companies leading the way are Black Seance and Artsy, along with partnerships with Siba and the Coke and Art Factory. They have created a don't miss event called First Friday. It happens this Friday, March 3rd. You don't want to miss monochrome at the Koken Art Factory located at 2500 Ohio Avenue. It goes on from 7 until midnight and it's just $10 to get in and enjoy a great vibe with talented artists at an amazing art walk. For more info, hit up the event organizer on Twitter at Black Seance. Hmm, it looks good. I heard it's an event for all the cool kids and if you want to support the cool kids, this is where you need to be. So uh, make sure you put that on your calendar. But right now, we got to get back to this amazing smelling seafood pasta. Chef Jack has already added the mussels and the shrimp and the cream and the wine. And now we're adding the linguine noodles. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. almost time to plate it. So I guess you're going to garnish it with what, some parsley, some parsley over there? Yes, gonna, that'll be the, the final touch. Okay. And right now we're just adding the um, linguine and then we're going to readjust the seasoning because you know, once you keep adding things, it kind of loses its flavor. Right. So we're just going to let that maybe simmer for about one minute and then we'll plate up and then add the garnish, which will be the parsley. So do you taste as you're cooking? Oh, for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you have to. Like I said, you need to know when to readjust and things like that. So in the beginning I'll taste and in the middle I'll taste and towards the end, just so you can make sure you have all of those flavor profiles down. That's how you can prevent from having some bland food exactly. coming out of your kitchen, honey. Yes. You don't want that. Yes. People eating your fried chicken, talking about something. You should have added more sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so Misha, tell me, I know we talked about your pop-up dinners, but you have other events too. Tell me what you have on the schedule now. So next we have, um, on April 22nd, okay. we're doing another event with the Opera Theater of St. Louis. Okay. So we're doing a pairing event. This is actually going to be our third time doing it. Mm. So they do nine performances, nine different songs, and we mm -hmm. pair either a food or cocktail item with it. Mm -hmm. Nice. So the one in January was at the National Views Museum, oh. which was fun because I'd never been there before. Um, and the next one's going to be at the Omega Center. Okay. That sounds yeah, like so much fun. Yeah. So put that on your calendar, and they can get more information about that where? So actually go to Opera Theater St. Louis, their website. Oh, okay. And then when the, the tickets come out, we always post it on our social media that it's time. Okay. Our event sold out. It was the first one to sold out, that sold out for the January. So just make sure when you, if you want to go, you get them right away. Okay, make sure, sure you, put, you put that on your calendar and get those tickets early so you don't miss out on trying their amazing food and enjoying some opera all at the same time. Oh, it sounds like wonderful. a perfect pairing. Yeah. So you're chopping up the flat leaf parsley yes. over there. Yes. Oh, you know oh, what you you're know talking you about. I told you, I, I, I do know this. I do this. A lot of people don't understand. Somebody was like, Stacey, you know how to cook? Uh, yeah. yeah. I got kids. I hope I do know how to cook something. Yes. But I, I enjoy food. I'm a foodie just like you guys. I love to go out mm -hmm. and try new restaurants and find out who's doing some some really cool and interesting things in mm -hmm. St. Louis uh, in the culinary world. So yeah, I mean, you got to stay on top of these things. So I cannot have a show like this yeah. without knowing without my knowing, without, <laughs> without yeah. knowing something. Drop the terminology. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's shocking. So, um, so make sure you keep up with everything they have going on. So she's adding some some finishing touches mm -hmm. to the garlic and, and what, it was some garlic and some more peppers that you yeah, put on there. Actually, I added some more of our Cajun spice. Okay. Um, a little bit more red pepper flake just to kind of pull out because we you know it's Cajun so yeah. we make sure we get that spice get a, little um, a little black pepper and just a pinch of salt because we were pretty good on the salt yeah you know and you have that nice wine flavor going on so yeah so just readjusting at the end so now we should be ready to plate as you can see it's simmering the sauce is a nice consistency at this point so we should be ready to plate up and try some food. So what should you look for when you're doing a cream sauce? So basically, um, you know, the reduction part is important. You want to let it reduce by half, okay. if you know what that means. So as let's say you have a cup of um, heavy cream. Mm -hmm. So once you, you want it at a nice simmer. You don't want it cooking too high, but you do need it at a simmer because that's what starts the reduction process. So you want to at least see it reduced by half. And that's how you know that it's thick enough. You don't want to make it too thick. You yeah. know what I mean? Because you want a nice loose yeah. pasta. So yeah, so at this point we'll turn it off because it's like I said, it's continuing to reduce. Now what saves you too, if you add the wine to it, mm -hmm. that's also liquid. You get liquid from the seafood, the wine, and then that also helps keep it balanced without it thickening up too much, you know, so. Okay, because yeah. the last thing you want is some too thick pasta. <laughs> with a cream sauce, you can't even lift the, the, the right. pasta up. That's where people make their mistakes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see yeah. that. So you learn some tips right. and you also get that. So you know what, it's time for us to go ahead and plate this up mm -hmm. and wrap this up make sure you keep up up with culture catering on social media at culture catering on their instagram yes and what's your email 
uh, culture movement stl at gmail.com all right make sure you do that let's go ahead and get that on the plate so i can try it out all righty it looks delicious. You know what? Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of The Daily Mix, Who's Cooking? And thank you, of course, to Misha K. Thank you. And Chef Jack of Culture Catering. And for more information on STL TV, Who's Cooking? Download the STL TV app or connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. We love to hear from you. We'll see you next time. Ooh, let's get in there. Let's that do this. Ooh. I'm gonna hit it with oh, sorry. Real quick. Oh. She's gotta she's gotta dress it up real nice for me. There you are. Let me go ahead and taste it. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> yum, yum. I feel like such a, I'm just eating. <laughs> mm. It looks like it's amazing. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. That is ridiculous. <laughs> Thank you. Oh mine. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. I feel like I got it all on me. <laughs> this is so good. Good. Glad you enjoyed. Yes, definitely. I'm taking all of this with me. <laughs> <laughs> woo, woo.